Yeah. But let's get right back into it. We're here with the California kid, Uriah Faber, talking about the personalities in mixed martial arts. Uriah, let's talk about it. Kinetic number one, BJJ Fanatics, you know, they they kind of powered their way through the competition tonight. What were your thoughts on it? You know, one thing happened at the very beginning, and that kind of set the tone, and that was Those when... Lachlan Giles catching fire? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, uh, when Giles beat Manshir where they've, they've competed before, that set the tone because um, it would have it would have changed things had that not gone down like that. So, uh, But it was impressive. I mean, there was kind of a no-brainer. I did come late to this on, on putting this whole event together because Keith was being um, considered of my fight and everything. So um, things were kind of set in stone. But I think a stacked, pure jiu-jitsu team, you know, was going to run away with it, and that's exactly what happened. You know, let's talk about that, because I know you're co-founder, and obviously there are a lot of people behind the scenes, so I'm sure put it together, but you have Gordon Ryan over there, for crying out loud. You had guys like Vinny Megalesh, Jake Shields, who's a great name in jiu-jitsu. Talk to me about getting all of these guys to want to be a part of this thing and saying, hey, it's the first one. There's, I know there's a lot of competitions out there throughout the year. What, you know, just the process of getting all these guys for the roster on the first one. Well, the biggest thing is, you know, all of us guys, Gordon Ryan included, myself, you know, Megalesh, the, the, the whole crew in the, in the grappling world, we come from a world where there's zero reward. We're paying to go to tournaments, we're grinding all year round, and it's not a professional, like, you know, avenue or a professional road where you can eventually get all this money. So the fact that these kind of shows are happening where guys can get rewarded and get held on a pedestal and, and start making some money um, with their passion that they're grinding with just because it is their passion is exciting. And so they're doing their part by, by you know, probably, you know, you know, going a little bit out of their way to, to be in these big events and, and being rewarded for it more so than having to pay uh, as as has been in the past. And, and it's exciting to see people come together and, and have the best grapplers in the world represented in the first show ever. And um, it's good for them in the long run. Now, this was Kinetic number one. Any details on Kinetic number two? When, where, or is that just still a little far into the future after tonight? We, we put this thing together really fast. And, and Sean... Um, he he was the one that, that kind of wrote the rules and and came up with the concept. Um, Keith Veltri, he he's a massive uh, veteran when it comes to promoting. Roy Jones Jr.'s promotions, and he's been running business since he was in his early 20s, really successfully. So um, he's got a lot of things in the in the in the till ready to to be panned out. And I think we're going to see you know quite a few of these. Hopefully, uh, you know. If not every other month, if not every month, every other month, eventually, and uh, it could happen quick. Now, there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about with Uriah Faber. The first one, you've been semi-retired. You're a Hall of Famer. Are you still the California kid? Or are you going to pass that on to your daughter anytime soon? Is that still your nickname? Uh, I think it is. You know, I, they call De La Hoya the Golden Boy. He's not a boy. Uh, and the California kid, you know, I was a California kid. You know, even as an adult, that's when I adopted the name. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm keeping it, but I'm definitely passing the torch to my little baby, Callie, named Callie, uh, ironically. And um, you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it keep it real and and keep the young spirit alive, especially now that I'm 26. My last fight put me at 26. I I, I know, right? You're just a young guy, aren't you? That's right. But you know, you, let's talk about a little bit of stuff. People talk about you know, dad Cerrone's the narrative, Stipe becoming a dad. Do you feel a change? Do you honestly feel like different from you know, just when you were younger and still grinding in terms of your motivation every day? Um, you know, I'm not. I've never had a a problem getting motivated for things, of course, but it does put a whole new type of love and and um, you know responsibility and excitement into the world having a baby, and you don't really know about it until it happens. So um, it could be one of the reasons why I came out, just having something to uh, a little something extra in there, a little more responsibility, a little bit more uh, want to make somebody proud and and you know Jaslyn and Callie are a big motivation for me and um, just realizing also that you know being in the gym all the time I still I still am competitive with everyone in the world because we have a gauge in our room we have world champions and and top contenders so um, I knew I'd be fine
No, final question. No, you talk about, look, you're a businessman. You still run the gym. You're still out there knocking guys out in 30 seconds in Sacramento. I mean, what is the key to honestly just keeping that train rolling? Because let's be honest, a lot of guys, for one reason or another, they seem to topple out. What is the key to Uriah Faber's longevity over the years, man? Because let's be honest, people don't talk about it enough. You have been able to keep it consistent for so long that it's almost ridiculous. Uh, you know, well, thank you. I think. A big part of that is the way I was raised. You know, my parents were just super into health and nutrition, and I was born in a house in Isla Vista to home, you know, to midwives and and fed like the best stuff on the planet from the womb till till you know till now. And um, so for me, it's been a lifetime of health and fitness, and and it, that that includes never putting uh, PEDs in my body. You know, my body has always been where it's supposed to. My joints, my my muscle, my you know explosivity. It's never been altered. And so I think for me, um, that's part of my success. And I didn't realize. I'm, I've been unaware of how many people were cheating out there and so when that when that comes to light and you realize like I don't need testosterone placement therapy because my testosterone is fine and you know and I don't need to do this and do that I've always been in great shape I eat well I, I work out hard um, I don't need an EPO you know so um, I think that has been uh, part of my longevity and then just believing and surrounding yourself with people that believe that uh, that you can, and I and I've never lost that, and and um, you know I don't think I ever will. You're right. I think just very bluntly, whatever secret you seem to have to it, putting it together in your life, it seems to work, and we see the results all the time. And I think it's something a lot of people need to talk about. Kinetic one was fun. Do you have any message for the California kid fans out there as we keep rolling on through the year? Just keep your eye out. We've got a bunch of cool stuff coming. We've got this Insight TV show that we're doing. Just did one with Mike Tyson. Um, ShopAlphaMale.com if you want to grab some alpha gear. Alpha males and alpha females. We've got uh, a new line that we're rolling out. And, um, you know, other than that, hi to my baby Callie and, and Jaslyn. I love you girls. Your eye, always a pleasure, man. You take care now. Thanks, brother. Yeah.